This is the Nintendo video game system. It plays only cartridge games. This is the new Atari XE system. It plays cartridge and disc-based games. Disc drives sold separately, and only Atari comes with a real joystick. Both have guns, but only Atari comes with the target game, Bug Hunt. Nintendo has a toy robot, but only Atari gives you a keyboard for playing advanced computer games. It even comes with the amazing Flight Simulator 2 cartridge. The new Atari XE video game system. Unbeatable. This is the Atari XC game system. Released in 1987 under Jack Tramiel's plan to increase the company's console market share by going head to head with the likes of Nintendo and Sega, this was the last Atari 8-bit system that was released. As such, there were only 100,000 units ever sold. I picked up this unit a few weeks ago from another local Craigslist deal. I was very excited to bring it home as it's in excellent condition. I got this for a steal and the seller assured me that it was working. More on that later. The Atari XC game system is essentially chip for chip the same as an Atari 65 XE computer, albeit with a different exterior. The XC game system aesthetics remind you of a paint palette that an artist would use with its pastel colored buttons. Maybe this is what Atari was going for. I personally am a fan of the look, but many people aren't. I think it perfectly represents where home computers were at at the time. The console features a cartridge port which is compatible with most, if not all, Atari XL and XE cartridges. On the back of the unit there is a power connector, an SIO peripheral port for connecting disk drives, printers, tape drives and modems. The connector marked television is for an RF modulator to plug into a standard television. The switch next to it will adjust the channel that the signal will display on. Next to that is a standard composite connector and finally a single audio connector. On the right side there are two 9-pin standard Atari joystick ports. And finally on the left side is another SIO port but this is specifically for the additional keyboard that comes with the XC game system. While it's a cool look, as you can see, it's a real pain to deal with diagonal connectors. My unit also came with the joystick, keyboard and power supply. The light gun that's supplied with this pack unfortunately did not come included. So remember how I said that the seller assured me that this was working? Well it turns out this unit is defective. While the power light does indeed switch on, what actually happens is when I plug this thing into a CRT, I get a scrambled video signal. Now maybe it has something to do with Atari console being plugged into a Commodore monitor. Well, I'm only kidding of course, but uh, one of the things that we always like to do on this channel guys is to open up the console and take a look. So maybe there is a loose wire in there or something that can be easily fixed and hopefully that that's the case. Okay, so to open up the case, you just need a Phillips head screwdriver. Simply turn the case over and you will see five screw holes. Unscrew each of them. There is no hidden screw behind a warranty sticker or anything. Once you have all five screws removed, turn the case back upright and lift the top portion of the case off. There are no wires attached or anything. And wow, the next thing to see here is the metallic shielding around the motherboard. Atari never cut any corners on this stuff. Even back to the Atari 800 days, this thing is a solid piece of metal. Now with a small blade screwdriver, go around the case and lift the metallic tabs that lock the case together. Once you do all of these, you can remove the top piece of the metal case from the bottom, and this will expose the motherboard. Now you can easily remove the motherboard out of the case, but the bottom portion of the metallic shielding will still be underneath, so just go around the motherboard and separate the shielding from the motherboard. So while we have the motherboard exposed, let's take a closer look at the chips inside of this thing. The bottom two chips on the left side are the RAM chips. These two chips total 64 kilobytes of RAM on board. The chip immediately next to it controls these memory chips and is called Freddy. It's a custom chip that's a part of the XE computer line, but not a part of the XL line. The 6502C is clocked at 1.79 MHz and is the main brains of the system. The Pokey chip handles the sound generation as well as some I.O. The Antic chip handles the screen display and some I.O. as well. The GTIA handles the graphics display and feeds to the Antic. 
The PIA chip also handles I.O. communication between peripherals and the 8730 chip at the top houses the operating system and kernel. So one of the things I noticed when I actually powered on the motherboard itself, just the bare motherboard, was that the two RAM chips on the bottom left hand side on the motherboard itself were getting extremely hot. I mean, really, really hot to the point where I couldn't touch them for more than you know a split second. We're going to go ahead and replace the two RAM chips. We're gonna take the motherboard into the garage and work on replacing those two RAM chips. Okay, so what we're going to do is go ahead and remove the two RAM chips on the motherboard, these two RAM chips here, and um, we're going to replace them with uh, two of the uh, replacement uh, 4464 RAM chips that I've got here. What we're going to do, guys, is use our Hakko FR300 desoldering gun to actually desolder these chips off the board. Now one of the things that you want to do before you actually replace any chips on the motherboard is to put a socket in the position first and then put the chip in the socket. two replacement RAM chips and we've socketed those slots and now we're going to go ahead and power this thing up and see if it works. But it didn't work. In fact it had exactly the same video issue as before and to top it off the RAM chips got really hot again. Seems like everything I did made no difference. But then I thought about it. I never tested the voltages directly from the power supply. Maybe I should have done that first. The Atari power supply provides plus 5 volts to the computer. Well it turns out when I used a multimeter directly on the pins it was drawing 6.8 volts. This power brick is very similar to the old Commodore 64 ones from back in the day. They will start to overvolt and damage the motherboard. At this point I was getting a little nervous that there was more than just one chip that was defective. But I decided that the first thing to do was cut the connector off the Atari power supply and throw the power supply in the trash. I then soldered on the connector to a plus 5 1.5 amp Raspberry Pi adapter. I figured I blew up the new RAM chips as well since I was giving it 6.8 volts. So I replaced them again. And with all that, the Atari finally came to life. The Atari XC game system has onboard diagnostics for testing the RAM, ROM, keyboard and audio. 
Very handy. After going through all the diagnostics, everything was working as intended. So for the final part of this video, and one of the reasons why I purchased the unit in the first place, was the Side 2 Compact Flash Cartridge. The Side 2 provides hard disk functionality and much more for the Atari line of 8-bit computers with a cartridge port, all via a compact flash card. This thing has a ton of features with two modes. The first mode allows you to partition the compact flash drive as a native Atari partition via F-Disk partitioning software. This emulates an Atari hard disk drive. And the second mode, which is what I like to use right now, is to just copy a whole bunch of ROM images onto a FAT32 compact flash card and load them via the menu interface. I'll definitely look into the first option as it allows for more features and disk images, especially things like demo scene stuff which I'm particularly interested in. As it stands, if you own an Atari 8-bit computer and don't care too much about collecting for it, I can't recommend the Side 2 enough. For me, it's the best solution out there. So some lessons learned here, mainly for me, but for anyone who's thinking about picking up retro hardware or computers, test your power supply voltage before you do anything else. You can risk damaging your hardware, especially if it's old Commodore or Atari computers. Next, remember what I said about socketing chips? It's a good practice, and if I didn't bother socketing those two RAM chips and just soldered the new RAM directly to the motherboard, with the 6.8 volts coming from that power supply, I blew those chips and I would have had to use a desoldering gun to remove those chips off the board all over again. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you thought about the Atari XC game system in the comments below. As always, don't forget to rate, comment and subscribe and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye for now.